For some context, I'm a 32-year-old female. This happened to me when I was around 25 or 26. I work full-time as a researcher at a university, which is where these encounters took place. Now, I'm not a professor or anything, and because of my age at the time, I could have easily been mistaken for just another student wandering around campus. On some days, when the weather was nice, I would prefer to spend my lunch hour strolling about the university grounds outside, or sitting underneath a shady tree on a bench. I was enjoying the time I was not just sitting in a cramped corner of a lab somewhere. On one of these days, I was sitting on a bench enjoying the fresh air, and a male student walking by asked if he could sit next to me. I'm pretty shy and kind of an awkward person, so even though I really would have preferred to enjoy my break alone, I said, sure, why not? The guy initiated simple conversation to which I obliged, but I was careful not to be too forthcoming. He mentioned he had seen which departmental building I came from, which was slightly weird to me. I had never seen this guy before in my life, so why would he take note of me in particular? I pushed the thought from my mind, though. After all, the weather had been quite decent lately, and I had spent nearly all my lunch hours for the past week outside. Perhaps he was just a people watcher. He asked if I was studying within the mentioned department, to which I told him I was not a student. I actually worked there. He told me he was an engineering student, and then followed up with asking me out to coffee sometime. I apologized and told him I would have to decline. We parted ways after that, and I assumed I would never see him again. About a week or two went by. I was spending another lunch hour outside on campus, sitting on a different bench in a corner somewhere. Seemingly out of nowhere, the same guy from before asked if he could sit next to me once again. Admittedly, I can't quite remember what we talked about. My mind was reeling a bit at the chances of this exact same thing happening again. I was rather uncomfortable with having to turn this guy down a second time. Sure enough, he asked me once again if we could go out for coffee sometime. I apologized and told him I had a boyfriend and would not be meeting him anywhere. Again, he left without saying much else after. I was feeling rather anxious now, but it hadn't reached a level where I had to be too concerned about it. A few days later, I had just finished work and was leaving the building to walk to where I had parked my car. The university charged a fortune for parking passes, even if you were employed by them. I had always opted for the free street parking about a 10-minute walk away instead. My walking route would take me down several quiet residential streets with minimal car traffic. Even pedestrian traffic was pretty sparse on the busiest of days. It wasn't until I was about halfway to my car, down one of these quiet back roads, when I noticed someone was walking directly across the street from me, keeping a few paces behind me. I'd only noticed them out of my peripheral vision. I didn't want to flat out turn and stare to let them know I'd noticed them. Besides, it wasn't too uncommon to see someone else walking. I was just trying to be aware of my surroundings when walking the streets alone. I had to make a few turns coming up anyways. The chance they would be going the exact same way as me was very slim. But all the same, he did. He made every single turn I did, still keeping pace directly across from me a few steps behind. I didn't want to look at whoever this was. I didn't want him to know I was aware of what he was doing. I quickened my pace a bit. I was approaching the first of two busier streets before I would reach my car. His pace quickened to keep exact match with me. That was the moment I began to panic. I was sure he was following me. After that, I started to full out jog to cross the first of the busier streets. He started to run to keep up behind me and was now on the same side of the street I was. I was nearly to my car, but I had to cross that last busy street and go about a hundred meters before I would be there. It was crossing that street that worried me the most. I often had to stop and wait a good minute or so before it was clear enough to do so. If that were the case this time, he would catch up to me easily. Somehow, as if the stars had aligned for me, as soon as I made it running to the busy street, I had a large gap to cross. I booked it as fast as I could, finally turning around once I'd made it through. I wanted to scream at the man who had been pursuing me. It was him. I could have suspected at first, but now it was confirmed. It was that same engineering student I had turned down for coffee those times. Why are you following me? 
I yelled at him from across the busy street. I just want to talk to you, he yelled back. I didn't even answer him. I mean, the answer was obvious from the start. I was certainly never going to give my time to someone who was following behind me and chased me for an entire kilometer. I kept moving quickly to my car, determined to get the hell out of there. I didn't even care if he saw which one was mine. It seemed he had given up on following me and didn't try to cross the road after, to my relief. I got home and broke down. I mean, worse things have happened to other people, no doubt, and he didn't have the chance to harm me, fortunately, but I was very shaken. I had some anxieties walking to and from work after. It wasn't long before a co-worker and I would walk most of the distance back to our cars together. I even changed where I started parking for a time. A few weeks passed by since the incident, and I had not seen that particular guy around campus at all. I had started spending my lunches in the lab instead of outside. Occasionally, I would go to the student center to buy lunch instead. This one particular day, the food court was packed, almost shoulder to shoulder. I was standing in line at a burger stall when I heard a guy trying to get someone's attention through the crowd. I look up. There he is, waving to me, trying to push his way through the mass of people. I panicked. I started to cause a scene and yelled at him to leave me alone. His face dropped as people began to stare at him, and he slinked back into the sea of students. My heart was pounding, and I was shaking. I don't even remember if I ended up actually getting my food after. I went back to work, and from then on I was even more focused on my surroundings than I ever was before. It's been five or six years since then, and I still do work there. I'm relieved to say I never saw him again after the food court, and I haven't had any other harrowing accounts on campus. I'm diligent about being aware of my surroundings, especially when I have to walk to and from alone. Funniest thing is, the guy never even told me his name, so I couldn't report an incident to the campus police or anything. All in all, I'm just glad I never saw him again. I can only hope he didn't do this to anyone else before or after me. When I was a kid, my mom worked as a teacher, and she was very close to a co-worker of hers who had a son around my age. I was very close with the son as well. When my mom or her friend would head out for the night, the other would take care of both of us kids. Basically, it meant I spent half my time over there. My friend spent half his time at my house as well. It was perfect and very fun for us kids. We lived in different cities, but since that kind of system had been going on since pretty much forever, I grew up knowing my friend's area just as well as mine. His mom was well aware of that, so that being said, whenever we were going on a walk in their area, she let us just wander around. She knew we'd always find our way back to her. My mom was more cautious and always kept an eye on us. She'd walk a distance behind us to make sure she was always able to see us. I wish her friend would have done the same. One day, I had to be around the age of six or seven, I believe. I was going on a walk with my friend Marcus and his mom, Katie. It was a very sunny day. I was wearing a dress embroidered with flowers and had my blonde long hair let down. I often heard I was a pretty kid even from strangers in the street, and besides making me and my parents somewhat uncomfortable, nothing bad had ever happened. During that walk, Katie was walking ahead of us, and I was chatting and fooling around with Marcus. At some point, he remembered something urgent to tell his mom. At least, something as urgent as can be possible for an eight-year-old boy. He ran right up to her and left me strolling around behind for a couple of minutes just as it already happened a hundred times prior. This time, though, we were circling around this big camping site. We walked by all the big vans and camping cars. One of those vans, I noticed, had its back doors wide open. There was a man, probably in his mid-forties, smoking a cigarette and leaning against the vehicle. The man locked eyes with me as I was approaching, then saw that Katie and Marcus weren't paying much attention to me, as they were already a couple of meters ahead. He grabbed my arm and pulled me in tight to him. I found my body touching against his. I was so startled and weirded out, I couldn't even let out a word. I knew Katie would have heard me if I called for help, but I didn't have a chance to react. He leaned towards me, obviously much taller than I was. He muttered something I couldn't hear, winked at me, and kissed me on the lips. 
Then he pulled me into the open doors of his van. At this point, I was almost completely inside. If he had pushed me just a bit, I would have fallen right in. At this point, I was too scared to know what to do. Even though I didn't understand what was going on, I knew this was not okay. He put his hands on the doors as if to close the vehicle, and I felt my heart sink. At that exact moment, some man I'd never seen before jogged toward us. He was in his 40s as well, waving hello at me. Oh, sorry, I lost sight of you for a bit. I was so scared. The man had a very friendly look on his face and was staring at me with great insistence. The van man awkwardly laughed and yanked me out of the car, slamming the door shut. I ran over to Katie as I heard the van take off in a hurry and acted as if nothing had happened. To this day, I've never told the story to anyone, not to Katie or Marcus or to my mom, nobody. I'm 22 years old today. I'm grateful the friendly guy came out of nowhere just to save me. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I have no idea what emboldened that pedophile. He surely would have abducted me and was strangely okay with just kissing a small kid in public in broad daylight. I'm not even in the mood to add everything he did, but everything thinks the same thing I do. I wish him hell. The quick backstory, I've had a stalker for about four years now. He was never aggressive or sent me proper threats, so stubborn as I am, I did my best to just ignore him and not give him the satisfaction of showing him any fear. To be honest, after a while, I also wasn't really scared anymore, since he almost never came close to me. I know being stalked can affect people very severely, even in a case like mine, and that's totally valid. I guess I just got lucky because I was never really psychologically affected by it. His stalking behavior mostly just consisted of sending me letters and gifts, such as photos of my own apartment building from the outside, things he'd dug out of my trash can and so on. I called the police many times, but they weren't able to or even really tried to catch him. About three weeks ago, I discovered the German version of IMA. I thought that people might want to know about what it's like to have a stalker. Since I barely use any social media aside from Reddit and have no personally identifying information on there, I didn't think he'd ever see it. Like I said, he was never aggressive and had never come close to me. The closest I knew of was when he sent me a picture of myself unlocking my apartment door, taken from the corner of the steps above. I consider myself a very vigilant person, I was thinking he might have hit a camera there instead of actually being there to take the photo himself. I don't know how he got wind of the AMA, but he did. The next week was quiet, no letters, and I didn't see him anywhere. Then he left me letters with printed out questions and my answers from the AMA. He also left me a long hateful letter towards my boyfriend about an issue I had posted on a different subreddit. His letters were never hateful like this before though he never did seem happy with my boyfriend. A few days later, I got a gift. This time, he didn't leave it in my mailbox or at my car like he usually did. This time, he left it inside the apartment building right in front of my door. I didn't take it inside, but opened it outside to be safe. It was a pretty big box. It was taped shut. As I'm typing it out, I realize it wasn't a good idea at all and could have ended very badly for me. Luckily, he didn't decide to send me a bomb or something. What he did send was several zip ties, a roll of tape, a TV remote with most of the buttons picked off, and a pack of band-aids with a few used ones. There was also a framed picture of me. I could tell the picture had been taken just a few days ago. My boyfriend had been next to me, but his face was cut out of the photo. The frame was shattered, and the package was full of glass shards clearly more than just what could have fallen out of the frame. They were intentionally placed inside the crumpled newspaper that was stuffed in there to keep it all hidden. I called the police right away and gave it all to them. They were more concerned this time finally, thanks, and told me they'd send patrol cars out more frequently. He didn't show up or leave me any letters for another week and a half, but eight days ago it started up again. I found letters in my mailbox where he wrote about how he'd wasted all his time on me how I hadn't been appreciating his effort, how he was wrong about me being special. 
Five days ago, I left my apartment in the morning and heard a crunching sound as I stepped on my doormat. He laid broken glass under it during the night. I went off for work because I was in a hurry. I was going to make my boyfriend call the police, but then I noticed my car had been vandalized. The sides were scratched, the lights smashed, and the windshield had a phrase painted on. It's time soon, miss. My last name. I went back inside and called the cops myself. They found the same phrase written on a note under the doormat. This time, they really, really took me seriously, which might have just been because I was absolutely pissed at this point, which I made very clear. If for some reason you're like me and too stubborn to be afraid of your stalker, then all this, the letters, gifts, and photos, even the damn glass under my doormat, are really just annoying and inconvenient. Now though, with my car useless to me, that threat scared even me. I did have a dash cam on my car luckily, and it caught everything. The police took the footage as evidence, and they told me they'd look into it further. They promised to send more patrol cars out again. Then, it was quiet for two more days. That was until two days ago. Someone rang the doorbell just after 4 a.m. My boyfriend and I got up, but were both hesitant. I saw blue lights outside, though. Just as I got up, I heard them shouting, This is the police! Please open the door! They told us they'd been called by one of our neighbors downstairs, who came home from his night shift an hour earlier and heard someone else enter the building after them before the door fell shut. The neighbor went into his own apartment and looked out through the peephole. We have motion-activated lights in the stairway, so he wanted to see what was going on. He saw a middle-aged man walk upstairs. Above this neighbor were only me and my boyfriend and a single mom with three kids, who probably wouldn't be getting any visitors at 3 a.m. They came and found my stalker one and a half floors above me on the stairs. He should have been able to see the cop car since there was a little window up there, and they had their lights on. I guess he missed them, though, somehow. They found a pocket knife on him, and he confessed to being my stalker right away. He was finally caught. They got him. It took four years, a provocative social media post, and a very vigilant and caring neighbor. But he's finally done. He's facing several charges, and I've collected every single piece of evidence over the past four years. I don't know what kind of outcome I can expect, but now I've finally got some peace. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa, and here I will tell you my story. I describe it as pretty terrifying, and unfortunately it still affects my life today. You'll understand why soon. Before I begin, I apologize. I'm French and not very good at English. I decided to share it with you because it took place exactly two years ago, and I think it can serve to awaken the prudence of some, especially in this period where the days are shortening. To put in context, this happened on October 1st, 2020, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. I was 17 at the moment, and I had just left Isle de France, near Paris, for a provincial town to continue my studies. As a student four hours by train from my parents, I obviously decided to grab an apartment. The prices were rather unaffordable for me though, so I settled for a new student residence. It was in the heart of a rich residential pavilion, contrasting with my small student residence. Everything was mostly fine. I'd go to school normally. Right from the beginning, the teachers told us that unlike students of other disciplines, we'd have lessons in person, not at a distance. We would be the only ones to be on this part of the campus. In short, the first classes were going pretty well, even though I had trouble fitting in like the others because of the masks and the nasty COVID. There was one black shadow. On Thursdays and Fridays, I finished at 8 p.m., which meant I returned to my little house at around 8.45. As you understand, I was alone on my way to school. On the week of September 21st to 27th, when I went to class in the morning, I met a strangely dressed man three times. He was dressed in black, wearing a hood. His face I could not really distinguish. What bothered me when seeing him was that he looked like he didn't fit in with the neighborhood at all. I wasn't really focusing too much on it, though. Finally arrived the night of October 1st. As usual, I left the school, but unlike other days, I had to take the tramway about one hour later. 
I'd finally made a friend with who I'd discussed the timing of his bus. As usual, I waited there alone. Once in the tramway, I realized that just at this stop, there was nobody except the driver and I. I decided to sit in the four-seat squares to make myself comfortable. At the next stop, which was still in the campus area, as I turned my head before the doors automatically closed, my eyes crossed that of a man sitting alone in black. In only half a second, the man rushed to the doors that were closing and entered the train. While the tramway was empty, he sat right in front of me. Intimidated and understanding this situation was quite suspicious, I looked away and out the window. The more time passed by, the more my instinct led me to believe this man had bad intentions. In my head, I began to develop a plan to ensure the person did not follow me when I had to get off. Once the tram arrived at the destination, I decided to leave at the very last moment, just before the doors closed. As I rushed to get out, I heard a cry from behind. I turned my head, only to see the man had wedged his fingers in trying to block the doors. They opened up again, then he began to walk behind me. This time, I was sure I was being followed. As I accelerated my pace, I heard the man do the same behind me. I could even hear his heavy breaths coming closer. It came time for me to pretend to be on the phone to scare him away. That in fact worked at first. Indeed, the man turned around when my phone rang. I later learned it was my friend calling to tell me he'd accidentally gotten on the wrong bus. I made sure he heard. I turned around and saw the man slip something into his hand. At this point, he stopped for a moment, then started to scream into the air and run after me. I was out of breath and rushed into a crossing in the neighboring part. I threw myself into the arms of a random person and shouted, Great! You came to get me! At those words, they immediately understood the situation and returned my embrace. Before that, I turned just one last time. The man had suddenly disappeared. Once I was in my room crying, I thought back to that man and realized it was that same person I'd met multiple times earlier this week. I decided the next day to make a statement. During the day, I was called and told the surveillance videos of the tram had revealed the identity of the person. He was a wanted man for sexual assault and armed robbery. Apparently, he found great pleasure in assaulting rich girls to humiliate them before trying to steal them away. That's why he'd prowled in that neighborhood, made my blood run cold, and I decided to just go home to my parents. Apparently, the man was found two weeks later in another city for assaulting a young girl in a store.